this is what I've got on my truck today. Or on my trailer. It's not on my truck, thankfully. My truck's right there. Trailer's on my truck. This is on the trailer. Two rack systems that are going back to Winnipeg. We're in Langbank, Saskatchewan. This is about a five, five and a half hour drive back to Winnipeg with this stuff. This is the same place that I delivered. So I delivered and I picked this up at the exact same place. Zero empty miles. I love it. It's the way it should be. Otherwise, I get this big giant puddle right here where my feet are. And then when I go into the bunk, I take my shoes off. And then when I come back up to the front, I forget that there's a puddle here. And I step right in it. My feet are wet and cold every time. <laughs> I'm trying to kick the snow off my shoes first. All right, so it's going to be a good day. I don't know what's planned for after I get to Winnipeg. I'm trying to get a hold of the load gods and figure out if they have anything for me or what's going on. But I'm trying to get this unloaded, this stuff unloaded today yet, so I'll have two loads delivered today, which is a great start to the week. It's Monday today. I'm just waiting for a phone call, just to make sure that I'm confirmed where I'm going. Uh, I called the receiver where I'm bringing these racks to. They receive until midnight tonight. <laughs> That's awesome. These new members are Mark. Uh, I'm so sorry if I pronounced your last names wrong, guys. I'm so sorry. Mark Minigol, Jeff Howell, Jose Carlos, Benjamin Wimmett, Jimbo Slice, Mitch Rivard, John Seifert, and William Shingus Sr. All the newest members, welcome aboard. Today I'm hoping that there won't be any snowstorms as we're headed east. The forecast says snow all day. But if it's snowing like it is right now, that's okay. Here, take a look at this, take a look, come with me, come with me. Like you see, can you, can you even see it falling? Oh, oh, there was one flake. You see it? Oh, there was another flake. You see? Snow like this is okay. It's once it gets heavier and once it gets on the road and stays on the road. I don't mind it when it's in the ditch. Uh, we can have all the snow we want as long as it's not on the road. But once it's on the road, that's when I start not liking it as much. But I have till midnight <laughs> to get to my customer like five hours away. He said, oh yeah, as long as you're here before midnight. They leave at midnight, so we just have to have you unloaded before then. How often have you heard that? How often have you... Sometimes it's 24-hour receivers, I guess. But this is just first come, first serve. Yeah, whenever you get there, we'll, we'll just unload you. It's all good. Timmy's. Has Timmy's been around for 60 years, or what's with the 60? Is it their 60th anniversary? They're not the same as they once were. Can they really celebrate their 60th anniversary if it's not the Timmy's of yesteryear? I don't know what it is, but we just keep going back, even though it's not the original Timmy's. It's not the same. Yet here I am. I keep coming back. So we did swing in at Mooseman. Thought, why not? I saw Timmy's there and I was like, I can't drive past you again, Timmy's. I don't know who you are anymore, but I still want your coffee and I don't know why. From what I've heard, if you want the original Tim Hortons coffee, you gotta go to McDonald's and get coffee. I don't know if there's any truth to that, but. They changed the recipe or something a few years ago, and worst of all, worst of all, Tim Hortons changed their lids a couple of years ago. Terrible. These are Canadian problems, you know?
You ever heard of first world problems? 100 meters, turn right on, Trans Canada Highway, Highway 1. These are Canadian problems. Tim Hortons, what have you done? And why do I keep going back? I'm gonna keep going back too. All right, I got a truck coming from my left. He has his signal on, I believe, but I don't trust him just yet. Okay, I trust him, man. I'm going for it. Continue on this road for 328 kilometers. overpass that they've been working on for how many years? I think they've been working on that overpass longer than I've been driving truck. I've had my class 1 CDL for 17 years. I've been doing this, what I'm doing now, for over 12 years now. They've never finished that bridge. But it's finished. Bravo, Portage La Prairie. Bravo, you completed a project. Wow. So I was just talking to my friend Adam, who lives in the Portage area, and uh, he says apparently that overpass has been done since late fall, or just before all the big snow came. It's not completely finished yet, they gotta do the finishing touches like the grass and the, the center piece, the medians and stuff. He didn't tell me how long it actually took. I'm pretty sure they were working on that for like almost two decades, but maybe Maybe I'm exaggerating. It's been at least a decade, right? I don't know. So yeah, it's been done for a little while. I guess I just don't come through there very often anymore. That truck went through a solid red light. That was solid red, man. And you had those warning lights back there. So gasoline right now is $1.13.9 per liter for gas. Diesel fuel sitting at $1.59.9. I have a different price on my fuel the card. Kilometer, but, uh, turn left on Oak Forest Crescent. Why is the diesel so much more expensive than the gasoline? I've never understood that. I've heard many like ex attempted explanations. Is it because it's more in demand? But you think if it's in more demand and you're selling more of it in bulk, that it would be cheaper, right? Sort of like going to Costco. buy more at one time you get it cheaper why is it more expensive buddy what are you doing i don't trust you what are you doing stopping over there i'm going to this last one I'm far away from that guy why you just now you're backing up all right base of fuel i changed my mind I just checked the fuel price for Petro Pass on the east side of Winnipeg at Deacon's Corner and it's seven cents per liter cheaper than here at the Flying J today. So false alarm, I pulled in here for nothing. We're gonna go deliver this load and then on the way to Kenora, we're gonna fill up at Deacon's Corner for a little bit cheaper. Sorry Flying J, you've been outbid. Petro Pass has got cheaper juice than you. And I don't think I'm going to need to fill up completely either. I'm going to put in just enough so that I can comfortably get down to Brainerd. And I'll fuel up down there. Because I don't think it's going to get super cold tonight. I think that polar vortex has, for the most part, passed us by. At least this one. Turn left and then slide left in 130 meters. In 100 meters, slide left on. Cap to Road and then turn right into 170 meters. My delivery is just down the road from here on McGilvery Boulevard, a little ways down the perimeter south. The perimeter is the ring road that goes around Winnipeg. It's just Winnipeg speak for the perimeter highway. That's what it's called. It's a circle that goes all the way around the city. I was always told that uh, that perimeter highway was built as a quarantine zone. Uh, because we have the National Biolab research 
laboratories here in Winnipeg. So all the most dangerous diseases and viruses. Turn right on. Portage Avenue. Karen, I'm trying to tell the story. All the most dangerous viruses and diseases are researched here in Winnipeg. And if anything ever got out, like a like a 2019 situation, everything inside the perimeter of Winnipeg would be quarantined inside the city immediately. You wouldn't be able to leave the perimeter. That's what I was told. That's why they built it. But now that's that would make sense, right? Another reason not to live in the city. <laughs> but it makes sense, right? Because if you get like some kind of massive virus leak and start spreading in the city, all you gotta do is militarize and shut down that ring road around the city. Nothing leaves, nothing goes in. And you can contain the virus that way. If only some other places around the world had some kind of system of containment like that, for when those kind of things happen, uh, probably could have changed the course of history a little bit at one point or another.
pulled in right before me. Of course. So we're probably going to unload him first. He went this way, huh? That actually went as smooth as uh, we could have hoped for. I'm already empty, and that only took 15 minutes from the time I got here to the time I'm rolling away now. That's good. So let's head east. We're gonna stop at Petro Pass on the east side of Winnipeg, like I said, for fuel. I'm not gonna fuel up all the way, but just enough to get me to, uh, to Brainerd comfortably. I'll fuel up down there. Fuel's cheaper down there. Uh, it's not supposed to get too cold tonight. Let's see what the low is for tonight. And if it's gonna get too cold, then we gotta fill it up because I'd rather have full tanks. It's only supposed to go down to minus 15 today, Celsius. Bit of a tight lot in here, but there's enough room. Just barely. So it's not gonna get too cold tonight, minus 15 Celsius. That's not, uh, not the end of the world. Anything below minus 20, I get more, uh, concerned about regarding my fuel levels but remember my body's also climatized already to this winter season so minus 15 doesn't feel that cold to me at the beginning of winter that was really cold now man that's actually kind of nice oh minus 15 break out the t-shirt there's that trailer again on the left anybody lose the trailer just sitting there. Turn left on Highway, Highway 100. No, Karen, I'm gonna go and get some Timmy's. I know, Timmy number two of the day. Two coffees in one day. Who am I kidding? Two coffees in one day? That's not. <laughs> that's not bad. Only two? Usually when I'm on the road, I have two coffees a day. It seems like when I'm at home, I have a bit more, but. It all depends because the volume is different, right? I'll usually have like one large coffee and one small coffee. Looks like all this mess is done here now. Wow, it's only been like 20 minutes. They got all of this construction cleaned up here. This is where those DOT officers were and where all those pylons were. That was like 20 minutes ago. Wow. Here we go to Timmy Hoes. At the roundabout, take the third exit of one kilometer. How about no? How about take the next left right now and go get yourself some Timmy Hoes? Karen. I'm having issues with her today. I don't know what she's talking about. She's stuck in weekend mode, I think. She's still drunk. set the example and actually park in a parking spot. This is a is a revolutionary thought that does not cross the minds of a lot of people who frequent this Tim Hortons. You know, you could actually park in a parking spot and then go get your Timmy's. Instead of blocking everything, blocking the phone. I'm a little salty today, aren't I? I'm a little bit irritated. I don't know why. <laughs> One of those days where just everything's irritating. <laughs> Not really, like I'm not really physically irritated. It's mostly for conversation here on the vlog. Like, don't get me wrong, it doesn't bother me that much, but I find it funny to point this stuff out because I think everybody else sees the same things I do. And they're all kind of confused, just like I am. Like, why would you do that? Well, why? But there's so many people out there that do these questionable things every day. It's entertaining. I can make a whole channel just on that. Just people who don't have a clue. Or maybe they do have a clue and they just don't care. That's the question. Do they really not know or do they really not care? That's the question. When you're inconveniencing everybody else around you, one has to ask, why? Right? 
It's just, it's just me, isn't it? It's just me. That's why you watch me. Because I complain all the time. <laughs> Here come the comments. Stop complaining, trucker driver. You know, all you do is complain. I know. I was there. I heard it too. It came out of my mouth. <laughs> Josh, you always complain. Yeah? Try being me. I have to listen to it all day. You only have to listen to like 20, 25 minutes of it. I have to be me and listen to me all day. Every day. No breaks. You get annoyed with me just after 20 minutes, man. I don't know. I'm feeling weird. I'm feeling weird. It's been a good start to the week. I'm happy that Old Blue is running well. I'm in a good mood because of that. And uh, knock on wood. Knock on wood. She can keep running well. And this was a really good start to my week. Like Monday, I got two loads done. So I started yesterday, Sunday, went to Langbank, got all prepared and ready there. Someone cut me in line this morning, but we did get unloaded promptly. Even though I got cut, that's okay. Not upset about that, not at all. Not at all. You know, I only took time out of my time with my family to get there the night before so that I could get unloaded first. But that's okay, it's okay. Sometimes you just get cut and nobody cares. Do they care? Do they know? Do they even realize? They had to realize I was right there. I guess that means they don't care. So that's where this all started. <laughs> ah, yeah, but it's gonna be a good day. It's been a good day so far. That, that wasn't that bad. I got out of there, got my second load right out of that same location, delivered that now. That means I've delivered two loads in one day. A two for one special. That makes it a decent Monday. It's Monday today, right? Monday. Yeah, when I'm filming this, it's a Monday. If you didn't know. I'm gonna go get my coffee now. You think I'm wired now. So, just a partial fill up. I just put in 150 liters, which is 39.626 gallons. Uh, price for me here was a dollar twenty-one point three seven, or one point two one three seven per liter, or whatever. Let's just say a dollar twenty-one per liter. It's always gets confusing when they add the extra decimal points. Cost me one hundred and eighty-two dollars and six cents just for 150 liters there. And that was seven cents cheaper. My price over at uh, Flying J in Headingley over there was a dollar twenty-seven. This was a dollar twenty-one. Pardon me, six cents. Oh, I lied to you this whole time. I'm sorry. At least I admit it. I didn't do that on purpose. Okay, so let's say we saved six cents per liter. Bought 150 liters. I saved nine dollars by fueling here. Uh, so now I've got about two thirds of tanks that are full. That'll get me to Kenora, we'll get loaded in the morning, down to Brainerd, unloaded, and I'll fuel up down there where the prices are more so around a dollar ten per liter. Ten cents cheaper than here yet. I'm gonna throw that back there because not only do I keep records in an app on my phone called Fuelio, uh, it keeps track of all of my uh, fuel economy, fuel ups, all of my finance stuff, all on an app in my phone. I also keep track of it on paper old school and I also keep track of our overall finances in an Excel uh, program in Microsoft Office on my computer but that covers everything all of the money coming into our accounts and all of the expenses going out and then at the end it shows us how much we made uh, if, if like our net so all of our expenses and it'll I also break it down into where we spend it do we spend it on groceries eating out uh, Brit eating out me eating out uh, vitamins vet bills and uh, pet costs, uh, credit cards, interest, taxes, everything is all separated on a nice uh, spreadsheet. It's all nicely made. Uh, I used to do this back when we lived in the small house and then I stopped doing it for probably about a year. And it's so easy to get lost and lose track of your spending when you're not carefully 
micromanaging every dollar and cent that goes in and out. Now, don't get me wrong, micromanaging, I don't mean that we go and, you know, uh, I don't micromanage what my wife spends or anything. She, It's my money's her money, her money's my money, our money is in there together. But together as a unit, we, we do manage everything that we spend so that we know where our money's going. Then at the end of the month, we look at our net and we look at all of our expenses and we'd be like, wow, we spent way too much money on like dog treats. That said no one ever. We've never said that before. What's a better example? We spend way too much money eating out or we spend way too much money on uh, nothing. Like snacks for us or something. We gotta bring that down. Or we spent too much money on groceries. That's a tough one, because don't we all feel that way? We all feel like we spend too much money on groceries, because groceries are through the roof right now. But at least we can keep track of like, okay, we spent like, what, $1,000 in groceries this month, or over 1000 maybe 1500 or whatever. We spent $300 more this month than last month. What did we buy this month that we didn't buy last month? We can go over it and say, was it worth it? And we say, yeah, it was worth the extra $300. Or if we look at it, well, we didn't really need that. Uh, maybe next month we won't spend it on that or something, right? keep track of every little nickel that comes in and goes out. Keep track of my fuel, my fuel economy, my fuel mileage. Keep track of my trips, my trip mileage, my trip numbers. Keep them all organized. My pay statements uh, should match my records. I match everything up. Can you tell I have an accountant for a mother? I'm not an accountant myself. I'm not as good as she is at keeping records, but I definitely did have it drilled into me my whole life. Keep records. Keep records of everything. So that's what I do. I keep records of everything. And it's helped quite a bit, actually. I can go back to any point since I bought this truck, any point in my booklets. And if I don't have my booklets with me, I have my app. If I don't have my phone or my book with me, I have my computer. I can go back and see exactly where each dollar went. Do I need to do all that? Probably not. Is it a lot of extra work? Yeah. But does it make me feel good? Yeah. And it does help me to not spend useless money as much. I still spend more than I should in some areas and got to be better in some areas. But it, it at least gives me an idea of where everything's going. So at the end of the month, if I'm broke and I'm like, where did all my money go? I can go and see a detailed list and be like, oh. Oh, that's where it went. Oh, there, 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 and there. That's where my money went. Okay. Off we go to Kenora. So I have some time. I'll see you guys tomorrow though. I got nothing more to show you today. Nothing more to say. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. If you haven't already, go down below and hit that subscribe button. We make new videos almost every day as we travel around the Midwest of Canada and the United States for the most part. We have videos going back 12, 13 years now of traveling all around North America from coast to coast to coast to coast. We've had a lot of fun and it's all on the internet for you to enjoy. If you do like my channel a lot and you want to help us out, you can always join the channel for less than a cup of coffee a month and you get early access to the videos and also access to members only content and you get special status in the comment sections as well so your comments stick out. You can go down below my videos or to my main page and hit that join button and read more about it there. Thanks to everybody for watching. I'm tired, I can barely talk. <laughs> I'm gonna go and sleep. We'll see you tomorrow.